Hi friends, I have sold Tesla stock finally. You know I'm the biggest bull when it comes to Tesla. I have very good reason to do so and it's not because Tesla stock is overvalued. In fact, I still think it's cheap. It's not because I'm taking profit. My outlook for Tesla is much higher. The only reason why I sold off Tesla stock is I have been eyeing this stock for a long time. You know, back in 2019 when the stock price was at this price, I hesitated and regretted it a few months later. So like all stocks, sometimes we are presented the opportunity again. The stock market is a beautiful place to be at as there are always price inefficiencies. Sometimes it's really expensive, sometimes it's really cheap. I use this chance to make use of the inefficiencies. I want to point out a small point before I move on if you don't mind. I know after posting this video, there will be financial educators in Singapore, okay, we are a small country, that will copy what I do. After all, I've been featured on mainstream media a few times. So this is for those people in Singapore. As far as I know, I'm the only financial educator recommending this stock, just like Tesla stock a few years ago. I have no issues with people copying me. I'm happy, in fact, it's a good thing. My only problem I have is what happens if another 2019 May event happens again, where like Tesla stock drops 50% from 360 to 180. These idiots were giving stupid advice to sell the stock because they do not understand. So if anything happens, come back to the original source, which is me who takes the effort the tons and tons of effort, the years of research and stock market experience to be your voice of reason. I do not know everything. I do not know every stock, but if I were to take a position and share it, I very well make sure I can answer most of the questions that comes to me. Don't listen to people who speak well, but do not dare to show their portfolio. Talk is easy, talk is cheap. Okay, now I said my piece, let's begin. Yes, I sold Tesla stock, but only a small percentage. I still hold 1,000 Tesla shares at $201. I posted this and I showed you guys what I did in my actual account. It's still in my main holding. I only sold 200 shares in my secondary holdings to buy Illumina. Before I go to the charts, please help give this video a like. It really helps a lot in the YouTube algorithm and I really appreciate the effort. So now let's go to the charts. This is a stock chart for Illumina and you realize the stock has just plunged to this level. I'm just going to draw this line for you to see. Ta-ta! So what happened for the past one year? So this is, the, the stock price has, you know, like shot up back in 2018 May. So it's like more than a year ago, I think closer to two years. Stock price went up, went down, went up, went down, but each time it goes down, it can kind of like find a support region. So you see there's a support region here. This shows that, you know, people find that, you know, this is probably the most base price Illumina can go. Of course, that doesn't give it a future guarantee that it will go, uh, it won't go any lower. But having said that, this, song, this forms a really strong support price. If I'm going to scroll out the chart further, or probably let's go to the weekly view first. So this is a super far outlook. So if you look at the long term chart, since 2007, the stock has broke out of its long term resistance, which is at $188 and it moved on and climbed all the way up towards $360. It sounds really like Tesla, right? Tesla did the same shit. It climbed all the way up to $360. Anyway, uh, Tesla aside, I'm purely talking about this stock right now. If you were to go to the daily candles, that means we see every candle is one day, you will notice straight away there's only one pattern to this chart over here, which is it's finding very strong support lines at about $270. This is where I just initiated my position. So it's a strong support. Again, I'd like to remind you, it doesn't prevent the stock from falling down further, but the chances of it holding the support line is really strong. So now let's go back to the fundamental. This is the super, super short version of my fundamental analysis. I like to invest in disruption companies. 
you should understand that by now. The gains from disruption companies are tremendous when times are tough. These companies will gain market share because cheaper, faster, and more productive in both new products and services. The problem is, disruption companies are really hard to come by. It's hard to spot and it takes hell a lot of effort to really understand what they do. Think about the companies that have disrupted the world. Apple disrupted the phone market. Amazon disrupted retail. Well, SpaceX disrupted space. Tesla disrupted ice cars and now all ice manufacturers are scrambling to keep up. Facebook disrupted advertising. But think about it, it is easy to say this now but how about it back then? I'm pretty sure that one of the next disruption will be in the health industry. In particular, curing illnesses. You hear me properly, curing. I'm not talking about treating. Treating is like taking medication to fight the virus. Treating involves lots of trial and errors. It involves lots of tests and tests, troubleshooting with an estimate conclusion. If successful is good, what if it's not? What if it reoccurs? Virus mutates. So now I'm talking about a cure. No more medicines, just cure. So how? It's done with gene editing. Faulty genes causes all kinds of sickness. So if you have a problematic gene, you edit it away. You know, that's it. No more cancer, no more heart problems, no more physical disabilities, you know, etc. The thing is, I don't believe everything I see or hear. There has to be some kind of Proof of concept, just like Tesla, they had a proof of concept. So here's the proof of concept done on a human regulated. In the first, doctors in US use CRISPR tool to treat patients with genetic disorder. Okay, you see over here, people with a genetic disorder, there is no cure with a genetic disorder, but with CRISPR, they cured it. I'm not going to talk much about this article, I'll link it in the description below. There are other cases like this, for example, a 75% chance to cure from a stage 4 cancer, but I do not want to drag on this video. To make it easier for you to understand, here is how this works. Three technologies involved. The first technology is read, also known as sequencing. So what does read mean? It's like you go for your blood test, you need a machine to, to be able to read your blood. It's as simple as that. The next technology involved is to understand. Again, it's like a blood test you need, after the results come out, you need to understand the results. The third technology involved is to edit. So let's say for example, you manage to read your gene sequence and you will be able to understand it. You will know the problem with the gene. So what happens is that they will use this technology called CRISPR-Cas9 to go in and edit your gene. As simple as it sounds, Okay, it's not so simple. Today, I'm going to talk about this company called Illumina, a company that has 90% market share of the read segment. In 2003, it would have cost $3 billion to read or sequence a human gene. In 2014, Illumina introduced a technology that could do it for $1,000. Can you imagine $3 billion to $1,000 in 10 years? In a year or two, it's going to cost like $100. So with gene sequencing, you are able to read your genetic structure and you are able to quite accurately check what issues that you will have and probably know like when you die. These results would get more accurate over time as more and more data is being processed. No cancer will be detected much earlier and may even prevent it from happening in the first place. Eventually, I think the government will make it compulsory for everyone to go for gene sequencing because every life, every person have an economic value. Losing a life doesn't help with the economy, so it's in the government's interest. Right now, Illumina has a 70% market share of the sequencing market. Illumina's technology has helped scientists generate over 90% of the world's sequencing data. Illumina's continued innovation has significantly reduced the cost of sequencing from $3 billion to $1,000. Hello, can you just imagine the extent of it? So therefore, enabling mass adoption of this game-changing technology. See, I do not expect an increase in market share from the 70% that they have because the recent acquisition were being cancelled to prevent some kind of monopoly. So if that acquisition has happened, it's going to 
be like fundamentally bad for advancing the technology because competition is better. So it sounds all good with you know like 70% market share, but let's talk about the risk now. Like all innovations, disruptive technology from a new genome sequence platform is the greatest risk to Illumina. So while Illumina has outpaced current sequencing competitors like both Pacific Bioscience and Thermo Fisher, there are plenty of venture capital ready to fund the next generation technology that could eventually threaten their market share. So while most of these are in early development, nothing suggests little or near term threat. Numerous sequencing technologies have failed to emerge too, including giants like IBM and Helicos. It kind of sounds a little like what's happening at Tesla. Everybody is trying to catch up, giving both the disruptive companies further room to run. In conclusion, Illumina presents itself currently as a leader in genetic sequencing with 90% of the world sequencing data and a 70% market share of sequencing a strong lead with a huge discount to the future when this technology becomes mainstream. So as always, I do my best to simplify complicated shit. It really takes a lot of work and I hope you find this video useful. I would appreciate a like if you find this video useful and remember to invest safe.